Hello everyone, welcome back to Code with Beto. I'm super excited to be here back again. And in this video, this, this video actually is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to give you five tips to develop your application faster. And not just your application, these tips are going to work for web applications as well, or backend or whatever type of software you are trying to develop. These tips are going to help you. Now, let's pass to the first one. The first tip is going to be leave authentication until the end. Now, this may sound a little bit strange, but I want to start with this point, especially because I've seen a lot of beginners struggle with it. Uh, most applications nowadays, as you may know, uh, need some sort of authentication. Uh, so you may be tempted to start developing the application by starting to integrate the authentication. And this is a huge mistake because especially if the signing process takes time, like for example, you need to in enter your first name, last name, date of birth, uh, your email, password, and you need to type all this uh, just to be able to create an account. And then every time that you need to sign in into the application, you need to type your email and password, for example, this is going to take you a lot of time uh, down the road. So my tip for these guys would be to leave the authentication until the end or just postpone the authentication as long as possible. Another tip could be that you integrate some sort of mechanism or function that allows you to skip the authentication flow and go directly to the home screen, right? Because in the home screen is the, the part or the screen that we're gonna be adding um, more features. And if the authentication takes time, this is going to be huge in the in the future. You could also use Domi data guys to simulate a signing user so you can skip the authentication flow. And if you want to take this tip to the next level, you can use some very cool tools like Cypress or uh, Detox to automate tasks or testing into your application. The second tip guys, is going to be write reusable, maintainable and scalable code. I know I realized that this point may be a little bit trivial, but the idea is that although the early stage of the development of your application, uh, you want to get your application out there as soon as possible. And please don't, don't rush the, and don't let this rush compromise the code because this is going to take you more time that is going to give you at the beginning. So what I'm saying here is that no one can do a good job when you are rushed, especially in coding. This is a mistake that you may not even realize you are making until it's too late. So to provide a simple but concrete example, let's say that you are developing an application and you're applying some styles to the home screen when you need to cut and some and at some point you need to calculate the height of the screen, right? So you create a function or you, um, you know, do some sort of operation to get the height of the screen and you grab this variable and then you continue your development and you start creating another screens. And every time that you need the height of this of the screen, you are applying the same formula or you are creating the same function. And suddenly your client comes and tells you that the view that you are working on, uh, they don't want to use the full screen. They want to use half of the screen. Suddenly you are realize that in order to make that change, you need to go through every single screen and change instead of using the completely height of the screen divided by two, right? So they want now half. You will need to do that. Um, and that is going to take a lot of time, especially if you have like 50 or 100 screens and you know that uh, applications can scale until thousands of screens. So make sure that you are very careful when you are using these kind of variables that are not likely to change over time. In this case, if let's say two months ago when you were developing the, your application, you had abstract this variable into a module, single line of code that just holds this variable. And then from every screen that uses this variable, you can import that single module that you abstracted or that single function that calculates the height of the screen. Now, in the future, when you when somebody or your client asks you to make changes to the application, you can simply go to these modules or these helper functions or variables that you abstracted from the code and then divided by two in this case. And the same applies for variables that are not likely that are not likely to change over time. 
So for example, the colors, it's a, a huge mistake, for example, just hard code the colors of the application. Let's say that the brand color is some sort of blue and you are using the hex, um, hex variable in each each time that you are using this blue color and suddenly the, the brand color changed to be red. Now you need to go every and on every screen every time that you are using this color and change the variable. So that is a huge mistake that you can avoid by simply abstracting these uh, variables constants and then just change it in that module or that file in specific and that is going to change the entire application. So create, so, so be careful guys, especially when you are, you know, creating the first version of the application, you're trying to rush it to get it out. But if you don't, you know, make some stops and really think about what can change in the future, or maybe you are using some sort of design that it may change in the future and for sure is going to change. Most of the applications change every time. So try to abstract as much as possible. Try to re re realize every single piece of code um, or all the time because it's most more more likely that you're gonna end up uh, needing to change something so if you abstract everything it's going to be easier for you so that's it for this tip let's go to the next one the third tip guys is going to be focus on the MVP like I mentioned before stands for minimum viable product the idea in development is to make your application available to the public as soon as possible and is why we just mentioned before you want to take it out as soon as possible and it doesn't mean that, that you are allowed to write poor quality code like i mentioned before uh, rather it means that you should concentrate on the key features of your application and complete them quickly okay and get it and get the application out there as soon as possible so making your product available to the users as soon as possible is crucial because the sooner your application is in the user hands the less likely you are to make errors by errors i mean by adding unnecessary features to your application or overworking features that no one is going to end up using is that it allows you to receive feedback from the users quickly so you start implementing real applications that are needed by the people that in real life that is using your application and by knowing their their needs you can start implementing features you know quickly and that makes sense not just incorporating what you think that is good for the application but uh, features that are justified by real real people another advantage is that uh, of focusing on the mvp is that potential for resource conservation if for any reason your application isn't being used um, or doesn't solve the problem that it was meant meant to you may want to consider uh, discontinuing the project or just stop wasting your time and resources or make a radical change right so for example if no one is using your application uh, and you got it out there quickly right so you validate that your idea was right but no one is using it maybe you get feed feedback from the users and you fix the application and ship it again as soon as possible so you get you know so you work effectively and that's it for this point let's go to the next one the next tip is going to be have a design another mistake that i've often observed developers make is just jumping right into coding uh, without a clear idea of how you want the application to look for example let's say that you are um, that your app requires authentication let's go back to, let's go back to this the same example you start creating buttons, uh, inputs, adding some styles, playing with the layout of the application. You adjust the colors, adjust the widths, and everything just by typing code. And this is the worst error and the worst mistake that you can make. Um, because by having a design, you can prevent playing with all these variables on the code and actually have the exact application that you want to develop before you even start your project so to create a, a design for your application you can use tools like figma adobe xd in the worst case scenario guys you can just simply grab your book and a pen and draw something before you start coding please do that um, also don't be afraid guys to dive into figma or adobe xd and learn how 
to create a basic design because this is going to save you a lot of time in the future uh, by knowing how exactly you want your application to look, what colors, what layout, what screens you're going to have, how the screens are going to look. This allows you to abstract better the logic of your application so you can reutilize components, especially if you are developing a React or React Native application by looking at the design. At the first instance, you can realize that Maybe you're going to need a button component. Maybe you're going to need a card component that you're going to be utilizing everywhere because you already have the design and you already know how it's going to look. So design, it's the most important thing, I would say. Now for the last tip, guys, uh, in this short video, uh, the, the tip is going to be stop reinventing the wheel. And by this, I mean that nowadays, as you may know, there are a lot of resources at our fingerprints, we as developers, we have many tools that we can use, especially because we as developers like to over-engineer things and, and, all the, and most of the time we also like to reinvent the wheel. And this is what we need to try to avoid. And um, a lot of beginners um, you know, usually try to implement things that are not necessary to do because there's already a solution ready to use. And one concrete example that I that I thought of could be considering creating an authentication uh, flow into your application. So maybe you are tempted to create the whole infrastructure just to integrate authentication in your application or your website. And this seems tempting uh, to create everything because everything is going to be custom for your application. But handling infrastructure setup backend security concerns, data encryptions, and user information protection. How it's, it's a lot of work, okay? So please don't do that, especially if your application is a MVP or something that you, know, you are trying to validate from, from users that is going to work or, or not. Uh, I would recommend that you use tools that are ready for you to you know, to give you everything you need to integrate authentication in this case. So for example, you can use AWS Cognito or you can use Firebase Authentication. And there's more tools apart from Google and AWS. We also have Microsoft uh, services. Uh, so yeah, and these applications are, are well tested and they are going to integrate authentication into your application within minutes. So you don't need to waste time. This is going to be robust and scalable and yeah, I mean, of course you need to pay, but if your application is not, it's just an MVP, you know, you don't know if, if it's going to work. Uh, you of course need to use some of these services instead of creating a similar situation arises when you are looking to add a feature to your application that that has already been created. And for instance, if you are developing a new application and you need, for example, navigation, it may be a good idea to use a template. As simple as that. So, so you can use you start your project with a template that has already navigation integrated, and you can start simply integrating your unique UI. By the way, guys, for developers seeking such resources and premium resources and courses, for example, if you want to learn React Native, we at Code with Beto offer premium resources, including app examples. Uh, we have some projects for free. We have some premium resources that contain real applications from real life that contain authentication that are using these services, um, integrating, you know, navigation, everything. And if you want to master or are considering into learn how to create scalable applications, we also have a React Native course in which we, we teach you how to uh, create applica an application for the real world, as well as the basics for creating applications that are scalable. And well, to end with this tip, guys, uh, just focus on integrating these features as soon as possible, utilizing the tools that already that are already available to you, and you don't need to work extra. Okay, so by doing this, you're going to have a better product you're gonna get it out there uh, faster and you're going to save time. And I believe that this is all that I want to share with you guys for this video. I hope you like this kind of video. 
um, I thought of these tips and I thought maybe share share with you guys what I think. And of course, if you have something else that you will yeah, that you would like to add to these tips, please let me know down here in the comments. I would like to read it. And otherwise, um, don't forget to go to codebibeto.dev and check out the React Native course. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.